I like to go to, I usually use model as you know, but I like to go model. When I animate, I like to go model. It's a bit more advanced tab because on the bottom, there's a time that you can click on. And that gives you a timeline. And look, you can also open this and you'll, oh sorry, here. And you'll get your preset. It's kind of nice when you could uh, go here and uh, you know, drag and drop on here. So I like the model. I, I, I use both actually. When you'll get better, you, uh, people that are very good at model usually just use the model. Yeah. But sometimes it's a bit overwhelming because that window can do a lot of things. Um, so time. Uh, 24 is usually one second. In film, uh, video, uh, almost everywhere now, not everywhere, but almost, they use 24 as one second. So put this in your head when you're played back, 24 is one second. And it's nice because it's easy to divide by 2, 12, and by 2 again, 6. That's also a reason why 24 is better than 30. Um some people work at 29.97 for audio issues. Some people work at 30, 25. In uh, Europe, it used to be. Two. But usually in 3D now, uh, almost everywhere it's 24. So if we look, we've got 120 frames. So if you do the math, it's pretty almost 5 seconds. Yeah? We can change this for sure. We don't have to stare at, uh, at this thing. So I click on time once again to uh, enable the timeline. And usually you can go settings. And here you could switch it. So if you want it shorter or longer, we're just going to do a simple bouncing ball. So I'll do 80. And I usually put it on both. Yeah? Uh, I don't need the light, so I'll just find it. So we'll get a sphere. W. The way you do animation in almost any software, After Effect will be the same, uh, Flash, uh, even Photoshop. It, it's not just model. The way you do animation, you usually set keyframe. What we call keyframe, it means important frame, like posing. Like, you know, uh, my arm is in the back, and then my arm will go to the front. And the computer does the in-between. So the in-between are the frames between the keyframes. So often what you need to, to do, it start with the time. So you'll say, okay, beginning, frame zero. Sometimes it could be frame one, but in model it starts at zero. Um, what? The sphere, so you select the sphere. And what do you want to animate? Here I want to animate the, the move. So I'll change the move, look, I'll move it up. Okay? And we could animate here, actually. It's sometimes even easier. You see it says uh, position on Y. I could just click on this one. So you, saw, you see I could just click here. Now, on Y, if you think about it, uh, I'm going to also go left and right. So I could do, you see the X2. I could do the Z, but I might as well just do so when you click red, it recalls the keyframe. So what Modo is doing is like, okay, at frame zero, the sphere, because it's selected, transformation, the position, X is zero, and Y is from here. And then look, I can go forward a bit, then I can move it, and he set up the new keyframe, it's automatic. The second one, you don't have to click on it. And then look, goes back up, goes back down, back up, and back down. So now if we check, look at that scrub, it's animated. Can you guys do this? And I'll show more.
Do you get it to work? So look, if we press play, it doesn't look very good, huh? That's okay. We'll be able to fix this. So now, you see, every time it bo it bounces, it actually slow down instead of uh, really bouncing. So now, what we're going to do? Um, we're going to open uh, what we call the graph editor. You can open it by clicking here or pressing. F7. I think it's F7. Yeah. And it should look like this. And this way of thinking, you can press A to see all of the curve. This way of thinking is the same in, I think, uh, most animation packages. We call this animation curve or function curve. Maybe it's called an anim animation curve. The first time you see it, you're kind of like it's confusing. The bottom, the horizontal, is always time. Sometimes it's in seconds, sometimes in frame. So here, as you can tell, it's per frame. So bottom is always the time. And vertical is the amount of transformation. So it could be anything. It could be position Y, it could be position X, it could be rotation, it could be the color of the sphere changing, it could be the scale squashing, uh, the list goes on. So it really depends what you're doing. Now, if you look here, it's a bit bumpy. On X, we are just going left to right. So I could select those keyframes here, the red one in the middle, and I could press delete because I don't need them. Oh, no. Yeah, and I was not supposed to delete this one. Don't delete the green. And don't delete the first one. You can press control to decide. So, First of all, when you grab a key, look, you can move it. You can click on it and drag it. So that will make the ball bounce higher, yeah? You can also change the frame, you see, or the value of that key. You can enter it by hand if it's needed. And the way you should understand curve here, pay attention, because uh, when I learned animation a while ago, uh, they did taught me well, but I wish I would have knew, knew that a long time ago. Flat means it's not moving. Anytime you have an, an animation curve that's flat, the, the object is staying still. So if someone walk, when the foot touch the floor, usually the animation curve is flat. When someone... Um, when you start to have a curve, you see like a, a slope. So when you start to have a little bit of a slope, it's moving, it's changing, but slowly. And when the slope is greater, like it's steep, look like here, you see it's, it's faster. So the steeper the slope, the faster it is. So look, if I read that, that curve, the red curve, look, if we look at the red curve right now, it means slow, it means not moving, slow, fast, and this is a constant speed. You see, this is almost, when it's a straight line, it's a constant speed, like a, a camera move or a robot, a mechanical. And then look, it slows down, and it reaches stop on the X. So here, if you think about it, I do want a bit of slowdown, but maybe not that much. So I could grab the handle, look, move it back, and I don't want to go straight, because that would be like robot, like mechanical animation. But I could give it a little bit, maybe not as much as before. And we can do the same here. So now, going left and right, the timing should be much better. So 
So it starts slow, fast, very constant speed, and slow down again. What we can also do is select just, you see on the left, you can just select the Y on it. And then you can just focus on that one. And you might think, you know what, this is great, but I need more bounce. Do you need more time? Maybe I'm going too fast. I don't know. So, what I could do here, look, I could select those key and I could move them. Or maybe just the top one. Move it back a bit. And I could move this one back. Then this one back, you see? And if you want to add a key in Modo, it's middle click. You click on the scroll. That lets you add a new key. So look, we can add a few and do uh, one more box. So middle click will let you add a key. So we could drag a key higher, maybe this one a little bit lower, and look for the bottom key, if we select one we see it's 500 mil or 522, whatever it is, look, we could take this value, I could copy it, then I could select all of the bottom one, and I could type the same value. So then I know that they are all resting on the floor at the same height. So I took all of the bottom one and I put 520 mil. Or five, that's, that was mine. And my, you, you use, yours might be 500, I don't know. That's the height I have. So now, if we look at the top, when the ball is in the air, it should slow down a bit. So what I can do, I can drag that handle, you see? So when it hits the top, it's even slower. You don't want to do it too much, but then you could do a little. So now, on the top, it's going to slow down. You could slow it down here to a hair more. You know. But the big issue we have here is the bottom. It slows. Well, b when a ball bounces, it picks up acceleration. And when it hits the ground, it picks up again acceleration. So, so Tanisha, this class is recorded. It'll be a short class, but uh, I was telling your, uh, your colleague that uh, I have a wrist issue, so I cannot teach anymore, at least for this semester. Uh, you know, I need to give my wrist some rest and find a, a magical mouse, some kind of way of moving the mouse without using the wrist, or maybe the in the air. Like a, so yeah, you'll have a new teacher uh, after reading it. And there won't be a midterm. So, and I'm teaching them a little bit of animation. We are doing a bouncing ball. So here I need to break this into sharp, so I can s sharp uh, interpolation, sharp curve. So I can select this key and click here. And I could have done that with the three elements. You see here? And look, you could also move them up. If you want to exaggerate a little bit the, the thing, you can move them up. Key. That might be a bit too much. And here the same. So now, if I close this window and press play, it should bounce. See? We could add rotation. Squash is a bit more set up. But, um, oh, by the way, if, if one day, 
you guys want to learn more animation, there's some really good tutorial for free on YouTube called The Animation Principle. I did most of them, I, I learned a lot. The Brian, the teacher, is a great animator and teach very well. Those one. There's like 12 or something. So, uh, it's really, really a uh, yeah, great material. Look, I'll show you. Uh, I think it was last summer or two summer ago, I watched them. And I actually uh, contacted him, he was very helpful. And look, I did this. It sounds, it's nothing, I'm, I'm not an animator, but look. After watching his bouncing ball, I did th those things for him. Like he really teach well. So you could, if you watch, yeah, I think he has 12 videos. I only did four or five of them. But if you watch uh, them, you could do uh, all of this and way more. Like they are, they are older videos, but they are still up to date. So when we play back, right now it's only a sphere. So for sure it's going to play at the real time. But sometimes if you have a complicated uh, scenes or a lot of stuff moving, if your computer is not very powerful, uh, it won't play the right speed. It won't play 24 frames per second. So what we usually do in Modo, when you want to see the, the real time, the speed, you want to do a test, you right click in your window, like here at the phone view, you right click, and you say record OpenGL to movie. And this will do a very quick movie, and that movie is always real time. Doesn't matter how slow your computer is, uh, it won't drop a frame. So you can right click on the viewport, record OpenGL to movie. And you save it somewhere, doesn't matter where, it could be the desktop, it could be the name. And look, it does the capture for you. It's just like a print screen. You just like print the screen. It takes a photo, a snapshot of every frame. And makes it into a MP4, I think, or quick time. You see? That's the real speed. So anytime you want to check the real speed, you right click, record OpenGL to me. So if you wanted to make a full movie of this, you could go under render, look, you could tell him how many frames, you see one, make sure you've got the right camera, because if you have many cameras in your scene, that's a mistake a lot of people do, they sometimes don't select the right camera, so you want to make sure that you have the correct camera selected. Uh, the last frame I was using 80. So we go ready. Um, and this is pretty good. It's not HD, it's, it's what we call 720p. It's pretty good res. Uh, if you want it to go HD, you would have to go. Uh, but you know, for a test, this is way enough. Um, you would go 1920 by 1080. But that would take a while. That would be like, you know, really a high res. Um, you could also go 4K if you want, but most people will. Today we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna go much smaller because I don't want it to take uh, you know, th three hours. I'll go 500, even 450. I'll do a tiny one. But the default one is pretty good by uh, two something, by 250. It's not exactly the same aspect ratio, but it'll be good enough for what we want. See, I'm just making sure that my sphere is there. We could also animate the camera. You would animate the camera the exact same way you animated the sphere. Um, so the start and end, and the size. And for sure, huh, we can play with the quality, you know, or you know those settings. Uh, but here it's just, here actually I want to go faster, so I'll do one. Will be a, it won't be as sharp, but it will go faster. 
just to speed up my render. And look, I've set up my uh, sampling to four. There'll be a bit coarse, but it, this is just to speed up. So we don't wait too long. And uh, here I'll go even nice, I'll go 42 to speed up. Usually I would go higher. And here I would go lower, here higher, but it's just to speed up. Yeah? So 1 to 80, that's my range. That's the size, it's tiny. Usually this is at 8, I put 4 to speed it up. Usually this is 0 0.5 or 0 0.3, 0 0.2 to remove noise. I put it at 1 to speed things up. And GR usually 64 or a bit higher, 70, 80. Uh, I put it at 42 to speed up. We could even go lower. Same with this, we could lower this a bit. Just to speed up. So now look to render. We can go render animation. That's how you render your animation. Some people will do a movie. I don't like doing this because it would work. Huh? It would render the thing, and when it's done, it'll make a movie. But if you want to change something, you have to delete the movie and re-render the whole thing. So usually people in 3D, they would rather do image sequence. So they would render every image, image 0, image, you know, as a JPEG or PNG, image 1, image 2. And this is better because, look, I'll go, so I went render animation, 1 to 80, uh, to speed it up, frame step means it would skip a frame, I could go 2. Usually I don't use that, but today maybe I'll do that, just to speed up things. So yeah, it, will, it would be only 40 frames. So I'll go OK. And now he wants to know where to put those frames. So on the desktop, I'll create a new folder. Look, I'll right click. New folder. Call that anim test. I'll just anim. And inside that folder, we'll save the images as JPEG so they don't take too much room. And you could name them. You could call that shot one, or, but I'll just do it. So look, the moment I go save, it's going to save in that folder every render image. Look. And I like this, because if one image is bad, I can just re-render that one. And you know who is good to make a movie? Um, and you might want to add audio. Uh, you might want to color correct the whole thing. Photoshop is good. So I usually, after that, go to Photoshop. So because I, I put a step of two, it only renders four instead of eight. It's skipping one frame. That's just for speed. I would usually leave it at one and render the eight. So if we check this folder, look, all of the images are inside, one by one. You see, we could open them one by one and go next, and they are all there. So the trick with this, do you need to have some time? Are you guys rendering? Or? So then I usually use Photoshop to create my own. And you can add audio in Photoshop. You can also do a very uh, small editing. You could uh, split, you, know, you could trim a little bit of the animation if you wanted to. But the thing I like with Photoshop is that you can add audio easily and you can color correct. So it's kind of nice too. The only trick to know in Photoshop when you open the movie, look, you go into the folder, you only select one image. But you have to check image sequence. Then Photoshop knows it's an animation. Twenty-four frames per second. Yes, that's what we want. 
and you say it has gaps, so we say, okay, it's because I did the step. If I didn't do the step, there would be no gap. Yeah, I don't know if he, he might not like this Photoshop. I just thought of that. Uh, I don't know if what he's, what he's going to do with the gap. Yeah, you see we are missing a frame every time. Oops. So wait, let me re-render it without gap. So remember to render, it's render, animation, step to one. And say okay. And you could give it the same name, it might ask you to uh, replace them. Well, I think I did too much, I did 120 or something like that. I just cancel now. So once again, we can open Photoshop. And go. Open it might be the last one. So now, if you can press space bar in Photoshop to play. The first time he plays, it might be slow. Oh yeah, I actually I stop it too early. And look, then you get it real. So it is tiny because I'm running a 4K screen. So for sure mine is really tiny. But you can add audio here. You see audio track. I, f I forgot if it's a uh, MP3 or a wave, but I've done it before. You can just load the audio track. You could split. Look, if I want to stop here, you could right click on the timeline on the cursor and go split clip, and then it will cut the clip into two clips, and then you can dump the last piece that we are missing from. Now, if you want to color correct, you know, do levels, uh, you know, like uh, some sort of color correction, because it's a movie, you have to go filter, convert for smart filter. So you have to enable this. Filter, convert for smart filter. And that will mix it um, I mean, uh, that you can put filter on. So now you could put filter from here, for sure. Like I could put, you know, a pentoly thing if I wanted. But most important, you see under, under the layers? So now that it's smart filter, convert for smart filter, we can use those one. But we can also use the one on the bottom of the layer. You see the one here. So I could go levels, and uh, just for fun, I'll go auto. You see, now I got a level. I could blend it, maybe put less of it. I could do photo filter, you know, to give it a bit of blue. You know that one I actually want, or yellow. Maybe I'll go blue. Cool. You see, there's a bit of blue now. And then I'll trim that one down. I'm just going to zoom in so you guys can see something. But usually I would do that. I would do level, you know. Uh, as you know, I, I like to use a uh, photo. Uh, oops. Photo filter. Uh, depending on the thing, I might use uh, vibrance, you know, to remove a bit of uh, maybe uh, remove a bit of uh, of saturation. I could use color balance. That's maybe less rare. Um, curves. I would go maybe automatic and just use a hair of it, 
and you could also use brightness and contrast. You don't have to use all of them, but usually photo filter level and maybe curves. Okay. And when you are happy with it, I think there's too much blue, but you go file, export, render video. File, export, render video. And this will generate an MP4 with very good quality. Like it's uh, pretty amazing. The you don't have to change anything. And you could do 4K. Huh? I've done HD, I've done 720p, and I've done 4K here. Well, I usually use H.264. You know, it's the one of YouTube. It's excellent. Well, from for 3D, uh, to my eyes, it looks great. Uh, I use high quality. I don't change anything. And... Um, yeah, even the color management, I leave everything to, uh, to default. Um, you could put it here in the same folder you see in P4, or you could render into a subfolder. Now, if you don't want a movie, you see, here this is going to make an MP4 that you can upload to YouTube. But sometimes you don't want it. You still want it to be image. Then you click here and you say image sequence. And then, you know, it's the same. JPEG or the uh, but I, I've done image sequence but it's rare usually I just go uh, medium color you will give the the file a name and then you go render and Photoshop is actually slow to render me. here it's a small one but uh, it can take a while so. You see the movie is there. And you cannot see the compression. It's, uh, I'm sure it's, you know, if you look deep, you would see it, but it's very, uh, it's, uh, it's, it looks good. We need some help do you guys want to I can teach a little bit more not too much but I can do a, maybe a hair more animation do you want to take a 10 minute break and I'll show you a few more tricks okay yeah bye Amber It's up to you guys. Do you want to see a bit more? I'll do it. You know, I can fill it a bit, but uh, I'll push it a little. It's, it's my last class. Come on. I'll put some ice after on it. And take an ibuprofen. But uh, I'll do a little bit. Just, just like two, three tricks. You know, I might teach, what, 10, 15 more minutes. But let's take a 10 minute break. Um, but yeah, if you want to learn more about, you know, like cartoon animation, those uh, modo animation principles from Brian on YouTube are really great. So like I said, just a little bit. Um, is there any question with the bouncing ball? Okay. So now what I wanted to show you. So first of all, because I am sure you're curious, how would we how would we animate a camera the exact same way? Look, you don't have to do it. I'll just do a demo. But um, you could get a new camera here. I, I usually get a new one. I would go item, create camera. Item, create camera. And that would bring you see a new camera in mode. And usually that one, I'll name it. If it's my first shot, I'll name it shot one or something. Like that. So I know, I know it's the one I'm gonna animate. And usually the camera, they are hidden. It's like light. So you have to go here. Show camera. To see it. And you see it's here. It's sitting at the uh, at the middle. So 
So usually what I would do, I would bring a camera, item create camera, rename it shot one, so that make sure the camera under the gear viewport is on, so you can see it. And then, look, that's important, I'll change the view to shot one. So I'm actually looking to it. And then I'll take another view. Uh, and the other view, I'll look through it. Like this. Sometimes I use the preview. Actually, we could do this if you want. Maybe I'll be nicer. Look, we could stay with... Uh, the regular camera or perspective it doesn't matter and sometimes I'll just go preview it slows down a bit but you can s the cool thing with preview you can make it small and you can look at your shot one then you're looking for it and now look so yeah maybe this actually animate like this usually I get a preview window, make it small, and I look through shot one on that preview window. I don't know why I was showing you the other one. So then you can move W, look, you could move the camera back so we can see that more. You could maybe move it up. You see? And you would animate this the exact same way we animated the, um, the sphere. So we could put a rotation, we could put position. So look, just to show you, here I'll keyframe the three of them. I only need two, but I'll put the three. Then I'll go to the end, and I'll move my camera. On my, actually, I just need X here. And you see, he only, he only animated X in there. So it's that simple. So now, if I scrub, I can see the in-between. So it's hard to see, but the camera is actually following the screen. think if I had another object you would see it better. Yeah, like this. If I had a, an object static not moving, then you would you would understand what's going on. And if your preview is fast, you can actually play back the preview. It won't be uh, you know uh, it won't play back perfectly for sure but you would see what's going on. We need some help.
So if you select shot one and press F7, um, you would see the animation curve. And usually a camera, it's usually linear or close to linear. So we could do a bit of this. Like you don't want too much slowing slow up on the camera. It will look a bit better. So you could remove a bit of the easy out slow and slow. And if you cut in between shots, sometimes it's even nice if it's just linear. But you're going to have different shots, but you have to do testing. Camera animation is a, it's an art. I'm not very good at it. You could also look through shot one, look, be at frame one, and you could adjust it, you see, and it would change the keyframe. So that's also doable. Then go to the last keyframe and adjust the frame too. That's sometimes easier in this case. But careful, because if you make a mistake here, it recalls the mistake. You see the camera is animated. So the key thing here when you start animating camera is to render the proper camera. Because you see right now it's set up to render the other camera. So you go in the shading tree, shader tree, click on the render icon, and then on the render camera you switch it switch it to shot one. And now look if I press render animation, it would do the right one. You see now it's picking up the right camera. So remember, huh, you animate a camera the exact same way you would animate a sphere or cube. Make sure to make the camera visible in the viewport, and make sure to look through it, and make sure in your render to switch to pick it, otherwise it would render the wrong camera.
So now I'm going to show you, we're going to do maybe 10 more minutes and then I'll stop. Um, I'm going to go file new. I, I don't want to keep this scene, so I'll just go file new and I'll get a brand new model. You could delete the old one if you want. I click in here and say, but you don't have to. So the main thing I'm going to show you now, it's what about when you have two or more objects, let's say uh, you have a cabinet and you want a cabinet to move and you want a drawer to open, you know, something like this. Like how do you create a hierarchy? How do you animate uh, things like this? Uh, first of all, we often use a locator. A locator is just a center in space. It's something that doesn't render. It's like a, a handle. Bit. So, look, I'll, I'll delete the layer. I don't even need this one. So I'll get rid of this. I'll say yes, get rid of it. And to create a locator, you can go L, or you go item locator. Yeah? L. And think of a locator as just a little cross, a center in space. It doesn't render, it doesn't weight anything, and you can change its shape. Huh? You could, uh, that locator could look totally different, but you could, uh, so you go L to bring a locator, and look on the locator, if you want, you can change its shape. You can go custom, and it could become a cube, it could become anything. Something I like to use often, it's a uh, circle. The radius often I'll make it smaller, maybe 200 mil. And uh, it could be uh, facing me, it could be facing flat. Often I'll make it facing flat, so why? So look, I selected my locator, I went under shape, custom, and I put a uh, circle, axis to Y, and radius I made it a bit smaller, 200. And this is great because it doesn't render, and I can parent things to it. So that can be the little handle that I'll move. Look, I'm going to move it up, put it somewhere. Uh, it's there, it's just that I have to rotate to see it. Maybe I moved it too much. Yeah, I think I moved too much. Yeah. So. Yeah. So look, you could move it up a little bit. Put it to the side, maybe. And now, so maybe do this. So it's just a little handle that I can grab and animate. And now I can get a cube. I'll name it uh, big B cube, like B, big B. So I have a locator, I shrank it, moved it up, moved it to the side, I uh, put it on the y-axis, and uh, yeah, made it solid, used the circle option. Then I right-click primitive cube, I renamed the cube B underscore cube for big cube. And now look, I can control D to have another cube, and the new one, I'll scale it just a hair with R and I'll move it to the side with W. If 
perfect. Just a little bit. And we'll call this S cube, small p. Are you guys there? So look, now we're going to create a hierarchy. So if let's say I want the small cube to move with the big cube, you drag and drop it. Let me do it. You come here, you select the small cube, and you drag and drop it into the big cube. And you, I, I just took the default, I, I didn't choose anything. So now the small cube is a child of the big cube. It's inside the big cube. And we'll do the same with the big cube. We'll grab the big cube and we'll drag it inside the locator. So now the locator is the dad, is the master pan. So that's a very common way of, we call this rigging. That's a very common way of rigging. So you could do a animation within, with a hierarchy. So look guys, I can now animate, maybe from uh, right to left, or maybe the other way, uh, not this way. I'll animate this, just on X. So I select the locator, I move it to a s one side of the screen, and at frame zero, I record X, I set a key, And then at frame 120 at the end, or uh, maybe we want to go 120, we'll just go uh, 60. I'll move to the end of the screen, and now it's animated. Now, one thing to remember when you animate object, make sure there's no transform. You see here, I've got scaling. It, it would work for today, but it's a good, um, it's a good uh, behavior to freeze that scaling. We don't want 40. Because sometimes with animation, if they're scaling, or uh, pre-rotation, like they're not frozen, it'll, it overwrite, it'll take over the animation. So make sure the scaling and rotation they are default. Otherwise, you might have get some uh, bad surprise. So now, just to show you, I can grab the small cube. Look, W, move it in a little bit. Record the position on X. Go to the end. So at the beginning the small cube is inside the big cube and uh, my bad at 60 I'll make it stand out a little bit you see it comes out very slow because you know we have the spline, the smooth uh, curve. We could uh, adjust that. Something like this for sure. Uh, the small cube for sure will be linear. Like you could just select the whole thing, look, and uh, select the two key, and you could go linear. I'll give it maybe a hair, but 
I think Mina would block him. He will look more natural with a mechanical. You see? Actually, we could have used a little bit of slowing slot. It might be too much mechanical. Because the big cube has the slowing slot, so it does look a bit. It pops a bit. So you might want uh, both to be linear. Or you go back here. And you don't give as much. So you select those two. You go back to spline, I think it's this guy. And you just do it by hand. Just like that. So, the exact same way, you could animate the rotation, let's say, on here it's X, of the small cube, just for fun. You could go rotation X here, and at 60, you could say one turn. So one turn would be 360. You could animate it by getting the handle and turning it, but you could just type 360 at frame 60. So rotation on X of the small cube at frame 0, 0 degree, and at the end, frame 60, 360. So now if we play back, the little cube rotate. Okay. Maybe 180 would have been nicer. 60 so we could change that. Huh? Look, you could go back to 60 and click on one and then plug it. So we are done, the last, just one last, just for the road. Um, look, I could select the small cube, press M, as you know, to assign a material. I call that, uh, it doesn't matter. And just to show you, you could also animate the color of the light. You could animate the, the color here. Yeah. It's the same, it works the same way. So you see here, diffuse is gray. So I could go um, 60, so the end. And I could click here to record this color. And then I can go to frame zero and make it dark or, or white or whatever. I'll go to frame zero, and now I'll click here, and I change this to maybe a bit darker. So now if we play back, the, you see the cube, you see the color? It starts dark, and it becomes light gray. You could do the same thing with a light, with an animation, a texture. Wherever you have those little divot, those little buttons, you could do that. And remember, if you preview it, the locator is not there. If you see it, it doesn't show. That's the cool thing about locator.
stuff. But a lot of those things, uh, yeah, you could uh, maybe maybe not do the exact same one, but look, uh, those things, you could do a very similar thing, because uh, if you watch, it's pretty much, uh, yeah, the camera ani animated. Yes, there's quite a bit of modeling and the lighting is good. Uh, this is the shadow that I show you. This is the neon that I show you, you see. That's the doff, the, uh, the bloom could be animated. I didn't, and that's the fur that I didn't show at the end. So this you didn't see. See, there's a depth of field. And same with this. Okay, so usually the class where I teach Modo, it's this one, INDD218, uh, when I teach. Sometimes I think Daniel does it. Otherwise, Design307 is usually Modo. But like I say, I'm going to give my wrist a lot of rest. So, but you don't know if, uh, you know, if by September I can have a special mouse where I don't have to use my wrist. Or, you know, a head cap, they have a, you could put a pointer on the cap. And when you move your head, it moves the mouse. So uh, it might be a bit tiring for the head, but um, there are some solutions. I'm going to try a few of them because uh, I really want to give my hands, you know. I would love to be able to use the computer without the hand. Typing is okay. Like when I type, I'm okay. But it's more, um, and I don't do much typing. I can always record my voice too. But uh, yeah, sorry. So a lot of those were done in, uh, sorry guys, I was hidden were done in INDD218 but they had you know you guys only had six class they actually some of those are, are the midterm yeah actually a lot of this is midterm project so minus the depth of field that I didn't show you guys a lot of this you could actually uh, kind of put it off I don't know it's pixelated, the internet is slow or something. 